This video is the first of several in which we explore the old mining town of Berlin. Welcome to Exploring This Life, Season 1, Episode 21. Welcome to the channel. Um, today we're kind of at a place that's kind of special. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Okay, we are at the Berlin Ichthyosaur State Park. And the state park is special for a couple of reasons. Um, it has a ghost town, which is the old mining town of Berlin. Uh, but I would like to get the ghost town today mm -hmm. and knock that out. Maybe some of the campground, some of the other outbuildings. Um, so that's the cool part. Uh, we'll try and document some of this for you guys and uh, come along for the ride. So we are now at the Berlin State Park. This is kind of what it used to look like back in the day. And this is what it looks like today. So we're going to go uh, separate ways. Honey's going to be hiking a trail. And uh, I am going to hit these buildings because there's quite a bit of uh, neat stuff to see here. And uh, she's gonna go around and look at the different stuff uh, that's more hiking. Uh, but we basically trying to split our time, get more content. Uh, but what you're seeing here is some sort of structure, obviously wooden, weathered. Looks like it held some sort of wheel or hoisting system. A lot of old glass and stuff that's been collected in the area. Again, in the state park, you can't take anything that you find. So what a lot of people do is they'll find stuff and they'll set it on the ledges or the shelves uh, just so everybody else can enjoy it too. But this is the assay office and uh, here's the sign. Basically, I'll read it to you. It says, samples of rock and ore from the mine and samples of concentrates from the mill were processed, assayed, here, to determine the amount of value they contained. The furnace in this assay laboratory used charcoal because it was the only clean burning fuel produced locally. The night watchman used this office to warm himself and to rest in after each trip through town and on the lookout for thieves and fires. He also ate his midnight lunch here the watchman's name was Mr. Dolan, Doolin. Lots of metal, bits and pieces all over the ground, some bricks. Moving down through the building here. Um, again, on the window ledge, there's a bunch of rocks, nails, uh, some glass, some metal. Again, not sure if you're gonna be able to see much in here. Uh, just from looking, I can see some uh, a bunch of jars on the counter here, probably for chemicals. Uh, there's a wooden hutch. Of course, the furnace. A bunch of... Um, oh, I can't even... Crucibles, it looks like. Big ones, little ones. Uh, the back part of the furnace looks like it housed a, uh, a, a well of some sort. Not sure. And then last time we were here, the video that we shot on this site did not turn out. The uh, focus on the camera didn't work very well. Uh, but this is an old crankshaft, uh, whether it be from a piece of machinery or an old truck or something. We'll move back up this way. So this here is gonna be the stage shop, I think, if I'm reading it correctly. It's a pretty cool building. Uh, there's some license plates on here that are really, really old. Before we hit the building though, there's a table out here. And on the table are a bunch of parts, 
probably for machinery or the vehicles. Looks like a starter or some sort of motor. A water pump. A piston back there. That's a piston. A clutch plate. And a really old shovel head. Obviously the, the handle's been broken off of it. Um, just really neat. Look at these rocks. I don't know if you can see the shimmer off of some of these, but they're like quartz or crystal or something. An old tire weight. A lot of old melted glass or just glass. Really interesting stuff. Some sort of old fan here on the ground. Probably to provide ventilation into the building. There's a ventilation shaft of some sort here that has a bird nest in it. I don't know if you can see that. But now, from my reading, last time I was out here, this house was for... I don't know if you'll be able to see much. Okay, so... This is what I'm going to be reading here. It says, Stage Station. The stage driver and his horses were housed under one roof in this building. A partition made of lumber separated the dwelling section from the barn. A small corral was attached to the south section and the door leading to the barn could be closed in cold weather. The men who drove the stage from 1904 to 1924 were John Mullen, Ed Deeringer, and Alex Dyer. Alex used horses until 1950. On his first trip by Model T, the car quit him at the Derringer Ranch. He caught a ride into Ione for help, and Albert Mayette and Furman Bruner drove him back to his car and got it started. It's hard to imagine being back in the day when like Model A's, Model T's and stuff were not very reliable uh, for the time and getting stuck out in the middle of the desert, you know. Okay, so let's start at the top. Top one, Nevada, 1946. We're going to go down the left side. Uh, Nevada, 1947. Nevada, 1945. Nevada, 1952. Nevada, 1953. California, 56. Nevada, 59. Going back up to the top. Nevada, 1934. Holy cow. Nevada, 1949. Hawaii, 1951. California, 1936. Nevada, 1937. California, 1941. Nevada, 1942. They've got a piece of metal covering it. Probably for a sticker, maybe? I don't know. And then Nevada, 1944. And then... We've got um, Nevada 61, Nevada 65, again Nevada 65, same plate, front and rear. And then Oregon, uh, the tag expired in 77. I'm from Oregon, that's pretty cool. A uh, little outhouse structure back here. I'm not going to go around this building because it's, uh, it's pretty rocky. Um, but what's important here is look at the metal on this structure. This is what they would have covered the houses in back in the day. So the areas that are exposed to wood uh, wouldn't have been necessarily that way back in the day. Uh, but they just used metal, sheet metal that they found uh, or was unused from the mine site. They would just line the sides of the houses with it. I imagine during the summer it got pretty hot in there. But during the winter, that probably helped insulate pretty good. Moving down here, uh, there's nails all over the ground. These are probably original nails to the time period. A lot of wind. That there is an old flywheel off of either a piece of equipment or an old truck. 
I apologize for the wind. Nothing I can do about it though, other than maybe try and cover it. Put it down in the comments if you know what this fender came off of. Unfortunately, it looks like somebody cut the, uh, the wheel well out of it. Or possibly, okay, so the wheel well's there. They cut it off the vehicle, it's where it mounted to the vehicle. Still got the headlight ring in, or the headlight pod in place, but it's kind of beat up. There's a fender well there. Would have housed the uh, spare tire right there in that bump, or the indent. And then moving down here, we have an old stove. Again, this time of the day, it gets really windy out here. So I'm trying to shield the microphone as much as I can. Uh, but this um, oven or stove, whatever you want to call it, probably an oven, uh, was made by the Rod Iron Range, uh, St. Louis manufacturer. So this would have made its way from St. Louis, Missouri, all the way out here to Nevada. Looks like it would have been a pretty green color back in the day. Uh, there was a building on this site. Let me see if I can figure out what that was. Okay, so this would have been the site of the boarding house. Uh, I believe that the boarding house burned down many years ago. Um, as you can imagine, being out here in the dry desert, um, any little spark will set off a fire in the sagebrush and, and whatnot. So a lot of the structures and stuff have probably burned down over the years. Others um, were dismantled for the metal during the war effort of, I believe, World War I, maybe World War II, or both. I'm not much of a historian. This is an old uh, pump. Let's see if it says what it was. Guess I should just keep it open to the page, huh? Yeah, it doesn't say. The uh, next building here is gonna be the machine shop. So these are probably um, pieces of machinery that were um, what's going on here? There we go. Um, these are probably pieces of machinery that were left. Uh, either they were too heavy to move out of here uh, and recycle for the war effort, or uh, they didn't want them. But you can just imagine how these things ran. I think they were steam powered, but I may be wrong. You can see the uh, push rods here, the crankshaft. This appears to be, I'm guessing, steam powered or coal powered. I don't know. Another piece of machinery here. This one looks to have been water cooled of some sort, or maybe it was a pump for water. I'm just assuming that because of the manifolds down on the bottom there. There's one on either side, so probably water in, water out. This is the machine shop. Um, what's cool about this building is three quarters of the floor is wooden. The other portion is earthen. Uh, there's a lot of shelves still on the walls. Um, a lot of countertops still. Let's see if we can look around here a little bit. I don't wanna spend a whole bunch of time in here because there's so much to see.
there's, I don't know if you can see it through the video. It's kind of dark back in the back corner back there. But there is a hoist um, attached to the wall that looks like it swings about so they could move equipment in and out maybe. Still on the machine shop here. You can see that wall back there has been burned. So at one point there was obviously a fire. Some equipment here. Hopefully from this window, we'll be able to see that hoist. Oh yeah. I don't know if you can see it, but I can see it. Yeah, that's better right there. Another piece of equipment in here, still sitting there after all these years. We hope you enjoyed this first video in the Berlin Ghost Town series. Um, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. And if you subscribe and hit the notification bell button, you can be alerted when the following videos come out. Thanks for watching.